Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. Welcome back if you are a regular viewer and if you're new to the channel, I hope you're going to enjoy this content. In today's video, stop using the rule of thirds. <laughs> stop learning the, the rule of thirds and start taking control of your own creativity and your own photographs. Anything that you do that is repetitive and standardized is actually taking you down the path away from your true creative expressive self. Uh, I'm trying not to be too serious about this. I'm a kind of a funny laughable guy, but at the end of the day, if you think doing the same as everybody else and being told what to do and that it's only right if uh, is going to help you with your creativity, then I'm sorry, but I think you're wrong. Um, I've been making photographs for nearly 25 years now and the last 12 or 15 of those as a professional photographer and I learnt every rule in the book. I went through that process the same as most people where they learn how to make good photographs based on repetitive actions, doing the same as the pros or doing what pros tell you to do because that is their way of doing it. Never once on this channel will I ever say to you, do it this way. What I'm always going to say to you is find your way and understand that your way will be the right way for you. If I don't like your photographs, that doesn't mean that you're a bad photographer. It just means that I might not like that particular style of photographs, the same as there are certain types of music that I don't like. Creativity is personal, expression is personal. So in this video, I want to look at a couple of photographs and explain my kind of thinking with the compositions that I made in the first place and how that impacts the way the photograph is read and how it expresses itself. I think one of the things we really need to remember is that photography is made up of a number of different disciplines. There's the time that we spend in the field and there is the time sat in front of the computer and there's also the time of sharing and showing our work to other people. I believe strongly that the time in the field should be filled with fun and excitement and being engaged with the landscape and maybe thinking of it like a Sudoku puzzle or some other type of technical thing where you're trying to make something work. And you can either do that in a very conscious, uh, predetermined way or you can do it in a very fluid way. I tend to favour the latter, whereas I just get excited about a particular thing and create an image on the back of the viewfinder that appeals to me. I don't think about where I'm going to be putting different elements. I don't think, oh, well, this needs to be there or that needs to be there from any particular intellectual point of view. I do it because it feels right. So when we jump into the Lightroom catalog here, this is just a photograph I, I picked at random really because um, first of all, it doesn't comply in any shape or form to the rule of thirds. Um, although maybe it does a little, uh, but any, any similarity with the rule of thirds is purely coincidental. The horizon line. It's okay. So think about if there's a horizon in a photograph, what is the role of the horizon? And what is the role of this framing, the, the, the way this limestone is framing the scene here? So we have a, a texture detailed thing very close to the frame. We then have this somewhat atmospheric element with the, the ocean, and then we have another slightly less detailed but quite geometric form further away. And then we have another horizon, and then everything else is sky. So we've got one, two, three, four quite distinctive zones within this photograph. The way I look at composition is it's the arrangement of feel. It's the arrangement, purely aesthetic arrangement. And if you say there has to be a rule of thirds element somehow and somewhere, then that is predetermining the only place you can arrange things and it's cutting out the almost infinite number of other alternatives. If I was to grab this uh, and take it down to a three to two horizontal, just for argument's sake, and stick the horizon on the third line, this is a perfectly pleasant photograph. And if I superimpose that third grid on it here, we can see that part of the C stack is somewhat on that third line, but we're using a lot of negative space on the right hand side. This is a perfectly pleasant photograph. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but it's not the photograph I wanted to make. 
I wanted to make a full frame image where we were looking at everything in the frame because I like this kind of frame within a frame, you know, using something else to kind of cradle that C stack in the background there. And I quite like the energy of that looping flow. If, however, I was to grab a four by five and push this up so that we are starting to remove a little bit of that left hand, uh, the right hand side there, you can see now that the horizon again passes more or less through the center of the frame, but we have these multiple horizons. Now this also works, but I think we lose some of that little geometry on the right hand side there. So however way I crop this to my own preference, whether it's this way or going back to the original way, however this is cropped, it will never comply with the rule of thirds. And this is because I composed this in camera. I shoot quite often with a square aspect ratio. I shoot uh, six by six on my Hasselblad uh, film camera, which is obviously a square aspect ratio. And a lot of the time I shoot with a square aspect ratio in my Nikon D850. Both of those destroy pixels. Well, the film doesn't have pixels, but it's a square. And in the, the D850, the, the cropped pixels are removed. I don't have all of that data in the, in the camera. So what I've cropped to is pretty much what I've got. So this aesthetic choice, this arrangement of content was what I wanted to do in the field. I do not think about the rule of thirds in the field ever. Um, I learned it, of course, 20 years ago, and I wish I never had, because I do believe that it is just one of those things that the argument is, well, it will get you up to speed quicker. It will help you make better photographs sooner. Says who? Better by whose definition? You know, at the cost of what? Your individual creativity, your individual expression, your way of doing things. Anybody who tells you to do it, take it with a pinch of salt. I strongly would say question everything. Why is the big question? So this is a very good example where the horizon passes very much through the middle of the frame here. So what we're really saying is the top half of the frame and the bottom half of the frame are somewhat equitable. There's a fraction more above than there is below. And I'm using the shape and weight of the content above and below the horizon to balance themselves out. This, there's so many different ways I could crop this. I think I might, you know, even that would work pretty well. But I'm not too keen on this kind of hole infringing on the corner there. Every time I crop, I crop by feel. It's as simple as that. And I want it to be where it is because that's my preference. If we look at this second image, this is cropped to a 16 by nine in camera. So this again is the full frame. I don't have any extra pixels. You can see when I hit the crop aspect ratio there, this is the full frame. And again, the horizon is slightly above halfway. And I think my argument here was that I wanted to try and capture this rush of the, of the beach here. Now we've got quite a lot in here, but there's quite a, there's a big chunk of negative space there. And I'm wondering if I need all of that negative space. So the original 16 by nine aspect ratio may not be the most appropriate for this frame. When you're phot photographing flowing water, there's a certain amount of chance, you know, you just don't know quite what you're gonna get and the amount of wave action or how much motion you see is always a bit of a variable. So again, looking at the aspect ratio, when we look at the third line, a huge amount of this content is off to the left-hand side. We've got this very pretty rainbow, there's early morning light shining on the cliffs there, there's quite a pretty sea stack in the background, and we have some quite strong flow through the frame. However, the flow is moving off away from that content on the left-hand side. One of the things with aspect ratios is that it allows us to control the way the viewer sees the frame. Because this is a 16 by nine, it is somewhat wider than um, it is tall, but there's still a lot of motion from bottom to top. 
I'm beginning to think that a lot of this content may not be necessary. Now, in particular, this bottom right hand segment there. One of the things that I spent with Adam in the Northern Spain workshops uh, that we've just finished running was a little bit of Gear Envy, which I don't get very often, but it does have a GFX 100S. And they have this wonderful aspect ratio of 65 to 24. And 65 to 24 is this super wide pano ratio, which I utterly love. It just looks so great. And what I'm going to do with this frame is I'm going to crop this into a 64, a 65 by 24 aspect ratio. And I'm just going to make sure the horizon is level near enough. And what that's going to do is instantly make you read the image from left to right. We see the rainbow, we see the color in the cliffs, but once again, you will see that the horizon line is just a little below the halfway. So again, there's no real uh, alignment here to the rule of thirds. I could move the frame up a little bit to start to try and get that horizon line on the rule of thirds, but I'm losing content on the bottom that I want. You know, I actually want this nice flowing water over the sand there. I like the line of this uh, break through the frame. I like how that starts to interact with the frame edge. I like all of these things for creative and expressive reasons. How much of this sky do I need to show for the world to know what was going on in the sky? It is what it is. There's a rainbow and some cliffs. I'm looking for balance and harmony and flow by my own definition. So I'm moving that horizon line and just about every time I move it, I come to the same point where I just think that looks right to me. The thing with the rule of thirds is it becomes a crutch. It becomes something we rely on. It takes a decision out of the equation because what you're basically saying is a third of the content should be above the horizon and then a third in the middle and then a third in the foreground. And that is just like a commandment. It just feels like this is how it has to be. And it doesn't have to be. If I was to scroll through my favorite images, almost none of them comply in any shape or form to any rule or doctrine, but I still love them. And I think that's one of the most important things with creativity is that we free ourselves from rules and conventions. There's enough of those out there in everyday life as it is. You know, there's certain things that we shouldn't do and there's certain things that are strongly advised against. That is not creativity and it is not art. I quite like this photograph as uh, in the aspect ratio there that I've discussed, this 65 to 24. And I'm just going to do a little bit of an Alistair Ben trick on this and turn it into something a little bit more dynamic. And I'm kind of happy, you know, we don't need to do much to some of these photographs, um, but at the end of the day, the aspect ratio and the distribution of content should not or need not conform to a grid. So hopefully you find this of some value to you and to begin to question some of your actions, any action that is repetitive, setting a black point and white point, doing certain steps, processing your images in a certain way all the time is actually counterproductive to your creativity. I think there's a huge amount of value in being creative. There's a huge amount of value in playfulness and creating things by feel and letting ourselves flow a little bit more through our photography. I'm not saying that abandon anything that you've learned, but at the same time, I think one should question some of these things and just blindly following somebody else's doctrine is rarely going to deliver your personal best results. I hope you find this useful. If so, please hit the subscribe button. As I mentioned in last week's video, there's a few spots left on our Spain and Scottish workshops for the end of this year and into January of 2024. If you would like to join myself or myself and Adam Gibbs in the field, then please check out the workshops that we have on offer. Please also check out the Expressive Photographers Members Forum uh, and of course our store where we sell our eBooks. So thank you very much for watching. That's it for now. Take care wherever you are and happy photography.
Bye for now.